Hello girls and guys, welcome to part 8 of our Django tutorial for web development in Python. In this tutorial what we're going to be talking about is migration. So basically, if you recall, every time we start an app, what's one of the first things we need to start thinking about is install that app and create like a urls.py to that app. When you create models, the first thing that should pop into your head is we need to make migrations, <laughs> okay? So remember how I was telling you that models correspond to your database information, okay? So this is your table, columns, data types. Uh, what Django does is it separates you almost entirely from actually writing any SQL or any other database information or language. And uh, so it, it's pretty high level. So when that happens, uh, sometimes things can seem a, a little too magical or sorcery or something like this. Uh, but what it does is basically it takes your model and in the back end it reads whatever your database back end is and it automatically generates the SQL required uh, to make modifications, insert to your database, make updates, and, and even deletes. So, um, so that's what we're going to be talking about here is how that really works, okay? Uh, or at least how it works with you. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to close out of models and like I said, we need to do a migration. So if you remember r way back when, when we went to go run the server and it's and it gave us like a little bit of an error it wasn't like a stopping error or anything or a breaking error it was just like a notification like hey you've got uh migrations that you need to make and that was because of the admins or the admin uh app which you never create an admin app but it does exist with all django um well at least by the default so if we go to my site and then my site and settings you'll see that there's actually quite a few apps here. You've got the admin app, auth, sessions, messages, content types, static files, and so on. So you do have other apps that you, you probably didn't even create. So you have to run migrations anytime you've got models. And if we go back here, you'll see that we do have a db.sqlite3. It's only 36 kilobytes. It's not really populated with anything. Um, so there's really probably nothing special there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make these migrations. So when we go to make migrations, we'll probably find that we have two major migrations that we wind up making. One is for the models.py and the other one's going to be for admin, unless you already migrated admin. So if we pop into migrations, you'll see there's really nothing here besides an init file that just says, hey, this is a um, packet, or basically it just says like, yeah, treat me like a package. Otherwise, there's really no other migration. Let's see, personal has some migrations, um, but my site really doesn't have anything. Anyway, so each of your apps is gonna have a migrations um, that's specific to it. So we'll see here in a moment. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna run the server. So first, uh, as usual, it's uh, python manage.py run server. So python manage.py run server. And um, it actually didn't find any issues. I possibly run the migration for the uh, for the admin. Let's go ahead and visit our website real quick. Um, so this is our website. Everything is is sort of running at least. So first, let me move this over. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Bring that back. Freaking Windows shake, you know. Um, oops, I clicked on blog. Uh, no such table blog post, of course, because that doesn't exist. So what first thing I want to do is like let's go to slash admin. And so far it looks like admin actually does work. We're not gonna be talking about admin here, but um, I didn't think I'd actually set up admin on this specific one, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and break this and we're gonna go and do manage.py. And first we're just gonna just do a Python manage.py migrate, run that. Uh, and so maybe we've already done, yeah. So I guess I've already run the migrate, but hopefully like go ahead and do that just so you get the admin one out of the way. So the next thing that we're gonna do is so when you make my when you do migrations, basically there's like two major steps, and probably it's always best to do three major steps. So the first major step is going to be um, to go Python manage.py make migrations. Um, no space there. So you make your migrations, and you'll see that okay, we made migrations at least for blog. So Django goes through and sees okay, there was a change to the models.py since the last I knew of it, and it creates this um, migration, and you can see it creates it in zero 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 one initial pi create model post. So let's go check that out real quick before we move on. So we go into blog migrations. Sure enough, there's our migration. Let's go ahead and look at it real quick. 
And we can see that, okay, here's what it's doing. It is, uh, it says, here's our migration. It's the initial migration, no dependencies. Here's the operations it's gonna run. It's gonna create this model, call it post fields. Remember I was telling you before that Django's just automatically gonna create that ID for you. Sure enough, there it is, auto created primary key. Um, maybe it just auto increments on its own or something, I don't know. Anyway, um, maybe that's what auto created is. I'm not sure. Somewhere you would expect to see auto increment as well, but maybe Django just knows that or something, I don't know. If someone knows which of these parameters is the auto increment or why, maybe it's auto, auto created just doesn't sound right. But maybe because it's the primary key, it's auto incrementing, because primary key means it's gotta be unique. But anyway, whatever. So this is the initial.py, cool. That looks good to us. Normally, I would not really check the initial dot like you can look at them if you want, if you want to look at your migrations. I wouldn't really look at them. The only time you would do it is if you're trying to actually like go back in time because <laughs> you'll save all these migrations. So it's like a constant state of your application, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to close out of here. And so that's the first thing we would do. Um, the other thing you can do is like if you want to make migrations for like a specific application, uh, you can do something like this, like Python manage.py make migrations blog. Okay. So you could do something like that, but this is going to now, now that we've already made that migration before, it just says no change was detected. Don't worry about it. Okay. So now in theory, we, you can run a, a, a migrate right now and live changes will occur to your database. But first it might be wise to see maybe what's going to happen when you make the migration. Luckily you can do this. So uh, with SQL, there is no like undo button. <laughs> okay, so uh, you can you can undo with Django like the schema. But if you go deleting your database, as far as I know right now, there's no like. I mean, you can always make backups, of course, but you got to be really careful anytime you're changing SQL around. So what you can do is you can say uh, you can go back up Python manage.py uh, and then type SQL migrate blog. And then the actual migration ID, let's say. So this one is 0001. So we can say 0001, hit enter. And this is gonna give you the SQL that will be run. So this is a create table. The table name is blog post, which is pretty cool because it just automatically takes post, calls it blog post, which, anyway, that's pretty cool. And uh, ID. That's automatically, yeah, see, where did it get that auto increments? Killing me. How does it know? <laughs> That's some Django magic. Anyway, so it's your primary key, auto increment. It gets your title, which it's calling a var car, not null. Body is a text data type, not null. Date, date time. So these data types here, var car, that's an SQL data type. Uh, body, text, that might even be, that's like a almost specific SQLite data type. You rarely would use text, I'm pretty sure, in, in my SQL. And then you've got date, date time. So as you can see, this normally you would write this query, but Django just writes it for you based on your models. And you might ask, well, why am I using models then? And if you're not totally convinced up to now, when we get into the admin, you're going to realize why you, why, the, why you do models. So uh, if everything looks good, then you would go ahead and run python manage.py migrate. Okay, applied all the migrations, uh, good, rendered them, applied the blog, initial migration, okay, we don't see any errors. Let's go ahead and hit up python manage.py run server. We're running the server, let's go ahead and visit our home page here. So here's our home page, we click on blog and nothing is there. Well, um, clicking on blog tells us that uh, and, and just the mere rendering of blog tells us it visited the table, it made the query, no errors, everything happened as it was supposed to. What's missing here is there is there are no blogs. <laughs> okay, so uh, so how do we begin creating blogs? Well, uh, we could make ourselves like a new blog uh, kind of model or a new blog view where we can like type up our blog and stuff like this. And that's what you would have to do in most languages or most languages, most frameworks, let's say. Uh, but with Django, Django has a really powerful admin that can access all of your models and you can update your models and change them and make new ones and stuff like this. So 
that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial. So we'll be adding some blogs and that would be basically the completion of our blog application. So pretty cool. So if you have questions, comments, concerns up to this point, if you can't get to this page for whatever reason, if you can't like load your blog page, there shouldn't be anything there. If there is stuff there, I'm not sure how that worked out for you. Uh, just more Django magic. I don't know. One of these days, Django will write your blogs for you. But anyway, uh, if you can't get to this point, ask questions below. I'll do my best to help you out. Maybe some other people can help you out. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.